Here is our first uh, really great derivative theorem. And it reads like this. The derivative of x to the n power is n times x to the n minus 1, provided that x is not equal to 0. And the reason for that x not equal to 0, because sometimes you can, if this comes out to be a negative, it actually means you're dividing by 0. So we have to uh, have a little detail there to eliminate that possibility. All right, so um, you know, in, in our first part of all this video series, we, we uh, define what a derivative is by using a definition. And, uh, but we want to get way past that because it's very, it takes a long time, as you notice, it takes a long time to calculate derivatives this way. So this theorem um, is wonderful when it comes to polynomial type terms. For example, the derivative of um, x to the third it's going to be 3x to the second. So x1 comes in front, subtract 1 from 3, you get 3x squared. Um, derivative, for example, of uh, x to the 17th power is 17x to the 16th power. There you go. The, um, so as you can see, this is a very easy one to learn. It's a very nice pattern. The, uh, but Got to be careful. Don't overapply it. Okay, uh, or don't overthink this. So for example, the derivative of one over x to the fourth power. What in the world is that? All right. Well, it is not one divided by four x to the third. All right. See, this theorem doesn't handle fractions, does it? And so, don't apply a theorem where it's not meant to be applied. I can't say this is just one divided by this derivative. Doesn't work, doesn't work. But there's a way around this. If we, if we look at 1 divided by x to the fourth as x to the negative 4, so that's using a, uh, an exponent rule. If I move an algebra term either from bottom to top or top to bottom, then the exponent sign changes. So when I bring x to the fourth upstairs, it becomes x to the minus 4. Now I fit. I fit the theorem. And we can take this derivative. It's negative 4x to the minus 5. So careful on that. Minus 4 minus 1 is not negative 3. It's negative 5, isn't it? And since we started with a fraction, maybe we should end with a fraction. This would be minus 4 over x to the fifth power. There we go. The, um, let's see. Oh, let's do another one of those. How about the derivative of... 1 over x to the uh, squared. All right, so that's the derivative of x to the minus 2 power. So again, bring that up, minus 2. And we get negative 2x to the negative 3. So again, this number comes in front. Subtract 1 from negative 2, you get negative 3. And we end up with minus 2 over x to the third. There we go, x to the third. Um, so, very nice when applied to polynomial terms. And uh, now, let's, um, what about square roots and other kinds of radicals? Let's see how those work. So, let me erase this and I'll, I'll show you those. So, what's the derivative of the square root of x? Well, um, again, it's not in this form. So, I have no theorem right now to apply to it. However, you, you might remember, <laughs> if not, you're going to learn it very quickly that um, when you have a radical sign, you can convert it to a fraction exponent. Now this is understood to be the second root of x, and, uh, or the square root is the second root, so x to the one half. So that the two that we normally don't write for square roots appears there in the denominator. And uh, whoops, I forgot to write the derivative notation. This is the derivative of x to the one half. All right, so you're going to do this a lot, <laughs> converting uh, radicals to um, exponent form. And uh, so what's this derivative? It's going to be one half x to the minus one half. So one minus one half is minus one half, isn't it? And, uh, and now we probably should put it back into square root form since it started in square root form. Also, this now becomes a denominator, doesn't it? So I have 1 on top, 2 
uh, square root of x. There you go. And so uh, let, let, me, let me just show you an extra step here. One half times one over x to the positive one half becomes one over two times the square root of x. All right. Uh, we better do another one of those. How about the derivative of the cube root of x to the seventh? Okay. Cube root x to the seventh. So um, this would be the derivative of x raised to the. Now, what would that be? This is uh, the numerator is seven. The denominator is three. So seven thirds. Derivative of x to the seven thirds. And so again, the denominator is the index of the radical. In this case, the radical is a cube root. Uh, I, have, I have a lot of students who just call everything radicals, but uh, you know. <laughs> There's specific kinds of radicals, there's square roots and cube roots and fourth roots. And so um, when I speak about radicals, it's more in a general form, but in this case it's a cube root, the index is three, it's a denominator. All right, so what's that derivative? Seven thirds times x to the seven thirds minus one. And I think you'll get good at this arithmetic. You know, the north subtract, we have to get common denominators. So 1 becomes 3 over 3, 7 minus 3 is 4, it's 4 thirds. So 4 thirds, which now becomes the, see, 7 thirds times the cube root of x to the fourth power. There we go. So that's the, that's how that goes. Um, all right, well, the, uh, what you probably notice is because of this theorem, Every time you take a derivative of one of these polynomial terms, the term drops one degree. You know, like uh, this is degree one half, and now it becomes degree minus one half. One half minus one is negative one half. That's because when you take the derivative, you're dividing the units by x. When you divide the units by x, you lower the uh, degree of x. All right, I'll, I'll explain on that in, in later. Okay, well, uh, I'm going to introduce another theorem, which is going to allow us to take uh, derivatives of polynomials and other types of sums and, and differences of uh, functions, and uh, that will make our, our life a lot easier also.